have it every week. Did you make it up? Look, it's a very old story. So settle down and shut up, because I'm a very old man, and I'm not going to get you. It's a law? Never ending. Never started it this way. It's about a man named Sinbad who leaves his home in search of adventure and fortune. He goes on seven voyages. I want to do that. He didn't. Why did he do it then? Had to. He lost all his money and his home. I hope it's like this. The bed, by the bed, a watch. It was my grandfather's. He left it to me. It works. A window, you could see the mountains. A painting I did when I was younger. It got all us on it. Mom, Dad, my brother, me. It's not very good, though. A postcard for my brother. I rug. I would always fall asleep before my father got to the end of the final voyage. Home. You think you'll stay in one place forever, and that place is the place you call home. But once you move, once you start moving, the first time was like this. Hurry, we have to go. My father came in. Hurry, we're going. Go, why? Take with me, grab your suitcase. Where are we going? We'll worry about that later. Where's Muller? Open up the carts. Get the cows. The cows. We'll need the cows. Hurry, Nas. Where are we going? I don't know. Thunder? There's a storm coming. Shouldn't we wait? There's a storm coming, all right. Quickly! But if it rains, that's not thunder. It is. No, it's not. What is it then? Guns! Now move! What shall I drink? What shall I bring? Take what you need. What I need? What do I need? Clothes. More clothes. How long will, it, will he be gone for? Who knows? Marvel I made when I was little. This won't fit in my case. Then leave it. They're getting closer. Hurry! My pants. My pants. Take those off and put these in. A, a pant? We'll need to eat. Now come. We fled over fast. Don't look back. Don't look back. Why not? Don't make it your last memory. We didn't look back. And that was my first voyage. Not much like Sinbad. And we came to this windy place. And now, we're waiting. Ever since I started moving, I spent more time waiting than actually moving. Nobody really belongs here. If I look this way, mountains. If I look that way, plains. Beyond that, desert. Where are you going? Home. Home? Home? That shack? It's not a home. A strong wind would blow it away. To the house then. It's not even a house. What shall I do then? Wait. Wait? Just wait.
Nice. Did you send the money? Not yet. Soon. When? Very soon. Look, this is how it works. Half the money you give to me. Half the money you give to a friend. Who? Somebody you trust. They hold on to the money till you get where you're going. They let them know, and they give the rest of the money to me. Simple. How much? It's expensive. Want a flower? Yes. How much you got? All of you? Yes. It's not enough. If we go by then. Long way, yeah, it's dangerous. Still not enough. Nice. Wait outside. What? Don't argue, just go. And so, I waited. Again. Everybody in this place is waiting. Everybody comes from somewhere else. Driven by the war, or need, or greed. Some of them. Though, hundreds of children have been born here. Maybe if they stay here long enough, they'll turn into home. It's arranged. Come, we must sell the cows. We sell the cows? They can come with us. Remember Sinbad? He sold all his belongings to search for fortune. So, days later, I'm with my suitcase, waiting for a bus. Sometimes, things look like something they are not. On Sinbad's first voyage, his ship came to an island. It was beautiful and round in the middle of the ocean. And he got off his boat to explore it. Wait here. When the bus comes, get on it. Where are you going? Mother and I have something to do. What? No. Take a pen. Give him a pen. See this? Yes. It's a pen. I know. Take it. All right. And keep it safe. Why? So you can write home when you get there. Who to? He'll be with me. Just take it. All right. And keep it. Fine. Safe. Fine. Fine. Good. And they went. I should have known. But I didn't. In a couple of minutes, the driver started putting us on the bus. Hurry up, son. Sinbad was on his island when it began to move. What appeared to be from land was not. Come on. Don't forget this. Thanks, but... We're going. Wait, but you must go for my parents. Sorry, can't do that. Got him alone. He was on the back of a whale, and the whale was diving. Wait, stop! The bus didn't move up. Wait, you must go for my parents. They paid. Yeah, for you. Yeah, just you. And Sinbad was tossed into the sea. And then I saw them. My mother and father. I cleaned the window so I could see better. They were standing on a hill by the road. They were waving. I did look back. My mother was crying. Somebody once told me that tears were made out of salt water. Each one an ocean. My mother stood like a statue beginning to dissolve. Dissolving into salt tears. My father waved. Then, the bus turned a corner and that was it. I was on my way. I was on my own. What's your name? A girl was sitting in the seat next to me. My name? Yes, dummy. Sinda. It's Sinda. You a sailor then? I've never seen the sea. I have from on board my father's yacht. 
father's show further than car, and look at your sort of person through glass. My sort of person? I don't know what sort of person I am. At home, I was just me. Then, I was a refugee. Now you're a passenger. Where are you going? London. My brother's there. Where are you going? I'm going to sleep. So she went to sleep. Good night, Sinbad. I didn't even know her name. And I sat and watched as the desert slipped past in the night sky. And at last, I must have fallen asleep too. Because the next time I knew, we'd be woken up. Soldiers with guns, they just got off the bus. The sun was up. It was hot. You, where are you going? To the capital. What about you? He's my brother. We're going to our uncle's. He has a shop. He sells clothes. Where is he? He's a bit stupid. Dropped on his head as a baby. Empty a bag. No. Stupid. He opened my face. He took out my things. He looked at the watch for a long time. It was my grandpa's. Then he took out the pen. Nice pen. My mom gave it to me. Shame, really. He can't write. Nice pen. It's yours. What? Thanks. No! Don't worry, Uncle will get you another pen. All right, back on the bus. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Say goodbye, Sinbad. My pen! On the bus? I have to give him his tablets.
said, take my hand. Take my hand. And the miser grabbed hold of it and was pulled out. My father told me to remember that story when I get to where I'm going. I don't know why. She was asleep. She looked younger when she was asleep. And nicer. At last, we came to the mountains. We got off the bus. Krisha had the name of the shepherd's family who would show us the way. They look high. There are ways through, if you know them. And snowy. It is cold. And there are wolves. And war patrol. The guns. Guns? But you can show us through for a price. Money? Of course. I thought my father had paid. Not to me, Adam. Do you have money? Of course. How do you expect to get from one side of the world to the other without money, Sylvia? On a magic carpet? Here, rub this. There might be a genie in it. Are you coming? Yes. I've got the money. What about your brother? He's not my brother. Then he must stay. I can't pay for you. I can't. Put on clothes. Not clothes. It'll be cold up there. You can have this pen. Now what would I do with that? Goodbye, Sunday. Keep the pen. I watched them go up the mountain as the sun was setting. I stood there, like a fool. The sheep were looking at me. They didn't seem impressed. I thought, what would Sinbad do? Not say put. So, this is my third voyage. Mountains didn't scare me. I was born in the mountains. And if there was snow, there'd be footprints and I could follow them. So I did. I let Krisha and the shepherd get ahead of me before I started to scrape a lot. I didn't want them to see me. We reached the snow line just as it was getting dark. I was lucky. There was a moon. I could see their tracks in the snow. He was right about one thing. It was cold up here. Very cold. Up and up we went, heading for a gap between two peaks, but keeping away from the main paths. This must be sheep of goat tracks. You never know where you were going if you didn't know them. I'll say this now. I won't go on about it, but it made me think of home. They set a heck of a pace. She was tougher than she looked. By the time we reached the top, the moon was down and I was just going step to step. Sometimes I miss my way, have to retrace. I got to the top. It was dark. But I could see lights from far distant houses. A village, maybe. Closer, at the bottom of the mountain. <laughs> Moving lights. Headlights, a road! Those lights must be border patrols. Must keep away from them. I looked around for where the tracks led down. Found them. But there were other tracks too. Dog tracks. A sheep dog? A big dog. I started to go faster. It was steep and the snow was deeper. I fell. I looked around, no tracks, no tracks anywhere. I scrambled up back to where I fell. There are tracks there. I plunged after, stumbling, sliding. And then, two things happened at the same time. I had been cold before, I thought, but this turned my blood to ice. A shot. Ah! I froze. Border guards, they've been seen. And a howl. Wolves. Wolves have seen them too. Shouting. What was it? I thought I could hear Krisha's voice. A girl, anyway. Because how many girls could there be on this mountain in the middle of the night? I couldn't move. Well, it's well to guns. So I picked up my case and started to plunge.
lunge down the mountain. I did so much fine Krishna as I did Bobby Dwarf. Krishna! Where's the shepherd? Gone. He went up as soon as the shooting started. Just left me! Come on. Where are we going? London. Ain't away from those floods. And we started to plunge down the mountain. And then we saw them. Oh. How many? Two. Come on. Keep coming. I can barely move. Wolf dinner. I can't. I started to swim my face then. This reminds me of a story. Not now. It's about an unlucky man who climbs a mountain to see God. Don't leave me. Then follow. This man met a wolf. The wolf was thin and weak and he wanted to know what he should do about it. So what did the man do? He said he got stop. And did he? That wolf, he's come closer. Well, he kept on going up the mountain. He knew me. And he came across a withered tree. He told the tree that he was going up the mountain to ask God why he was so unlucky. And the tree said, while he was at it, could he ask what the tree should do? So he said fine and carried on. Next, he met a lonely but beautiful girl. Is this a long story? <laughs> this has no way to it. He told the girl that he was going up the mountain. I get the picture, just get on with it. At least the shooting is up. Is that supposed to cheer me up? Anyway, at last, he gets to God and asks, asks him what he should do about his lack of luck. And God says, look around you. Luck is all around. Just find it and take it. The man says, keep going slowly. If they run across, I lose my chase. The man says that? No. The man says, I'll run quickly home and look for my luck. Then he asks the other questions and sets off. Look out, he's going to pounce! With a growl, the wolf pounced at us. I took my case and stepped down hard on the wolf's nose. Run! We stumbled down the mountain. The man came to the lonely and beautiful girl. So did she get an answer? Yes. He told her God says she should get married and she wouldn't be so lonely anymore. So did he marry her? No. Hurry up. He said, sorry, I'd love to, but I've got to go home and look for my luck. And he continued on running down the mountain. Wait, wait a minute. Hurry up. Then he came to the withered tree, and he told the tree, God says there's a box of treasure buried in your roots. It prevented them from growing. If you get somebody to dig them up, you'll grow tall and strong. So did he dig it up? No. He said, sorry, I have not time to be digging up treasure. I've got to go home and look for my luck. Was this man called Sinbad by any chance? I'll ignore that. Well, he kept on running down the mountain. Stop. What? I think we lost them. We must be over the border. And look, the road! Come on. Wait, what happened to the wolf? Which wolf? The wolf in the story. Oh. The man came to the wolf, and the wolf asked, Did you get an answer to my question? And the man said, Yes. God says you should eat the first school that comes along this path. So he did. <laughs> what? <laughs> the wolf ate him. <laughs> <laughs>
reminded me of the mountains at home. I met a shepherd who kindly showed me the way. We should be at the port tomorrow now, so it won't be long till I finish my travels. It wasn't like that. We were in that city by the sea for two whole years.
this is what I promised. And take back this for your drink. And this for being so nice to give you a job. And this to get to the authorities. So they don't send you back to your stinking, warm, torn country. Of course, I can give you that, but you'll be on your way back fine. That's all? But that's not fair. No, it's not. We do. We watched him go into his office. And we settled down to work. My fourth voyage. The voyage of going nowhere. For two years we worked for him. Saving a little every week. Eating as cheaply as we could. Walking by the seaside and talking about where we were going. My brother, her uncle, talking about where we come from. No, that's not true. Me talking about the mountains. Grisha, never talking about her family. Falling asleep, dead on our feet at the end of the night. But Grisha still had those nightmares. Something else she wouldn't talk about. Working here. It's like you have there. Is it? Shall I tell it to you? No. I will anyway. I won't listen. Juha had a big house. His neighbor had a small one. His neighbor was jealous and decided to get Juha to move. So, every night, he'd bang pots and pans and sing out a tune. When Juha asked him to stop, the neighbor said, Sorry, can't. Maybe you should move. Then, one morning, Juha found a pile of rubbish in his garden. He knew it must have come from the neighbor. But, when he asked him about it, the neighbor said, Sorry, I know nothing about it. This neighborhood's going downhill. Maybe you should move. Each night the noise got worse. Every morning there was more rubbish. Then, one day, Jew Ha was walking past his neighbor's door when the neighbor threw a bucket of dirty water over him. Oops, didn't see you there. Jew Ha went home to change. Then, Jew Ha went to the neighbor and asked, how much will he give me for my house? The neighbor named a figure, and Juha said, I'll take half that. The neighbor couldn't believe his luck. Why? Well, said Juha, it's my name. You see, in my house there's a name. It belonged to my father, and before that to his father. And I'm very fond of it. I'll sell you my house but on condition that I get to keep my name. I will be able to visit whenever I want and hang whatever I want on it. Agree to this and you can have my house for half the price. The neighbor practically bit his hand off. Lawyers drew up the agreement and he moved in. That night, while the neighbor was asleep, there was a knock on the door. It was Juha. I've come to visit my neighbor. Can't you come back in the morning? No, it has to be now. Really? Juha waved the contract at him. So the neighbor let him in and went back to bed. The next morning, the neighbor woke up. What's that smell? He followed the smell to the front room, and there, hanging from the nail, was a pair of boots. An old, moldy, stinking pair of boots with cheese inside of them. <laughs> the neighbor spent the whole week with a scope over his face. Then, a week later, in the middle of the night, another knock on the door. It was Juha. I've come to visit, I've come to for my boots. Thank goodness, take them away. And he went back to bed. The next morning, the neighbor woke up. He was itching, scratching all over. He went down to the front.
rug through, and there, hanging from the nail, was a jacket, black with fleas sleeping off of it. The neighbor couldn't bear the scratching. Some days, he spent the whole day in the back just to get away from them. A week later, in the middle of the night, I knock at the door. Juha, I've come for my jacket. Take it, take it away. <clears throat> and he went back to bed. The next morning, on the nail, two rotten fish. Well, you can imagine, the house think of fish. The man think of fish. <laughs> His family <coughs> stayed a fish. <laughs> Nobody would come near him. Nobody would set foot in his shop. So he sold the house back to Juha for half of what he paid for it. You've given me an idea. You're being mean all of a sudden. What are you doing? Working. Krishna, stop. You're doing it wrong. Emma, you're sewing up all the sleeves. No one will be able to get their arms through. Won't they? Oh dear, shame. Well, never mind. It could be a new fashion. Don't. We'll get in trouble. When was the last time you sent a postcard home? Can't remember. Do you want to stay here for the rest of your life? No. Then start sewing your sleeves and keep your head down. Every week when he pays us, what does he do? He goes into his office at the back, gets the cash box, locks the door behind him, and pays us. This week it's going to be very different. So, later, we watched him go into his office. He was in there a long time. It's not going to work. It is. Just wait. He came out of his office and was just getting the keys out to lock it when Krisha jumped out. <coughs> Somebody, you idiot! Look what you've done! And she hit me. Ow! What, what have I done? You have ruined everything, you fool! What's going on here? He walked over to us without locking the office door. Look, just look what this idiot boy has done. You get us the sack. How could you have done it? What have you done for? Nothing. Show him. Just show him those sleeves. I showed him the pile of t-shirts as Krisha began to creep towards the office. Each one with the sleeves sewn up. He picked one up. I snatched it away from him. Give it to me, boy. No. Give it. It's nothing. It's a mistake. You've sewn up all the sleeves? You've sewn up all the sleeves? I'm sorry. I didn't mean... It's a mistake. I'm tired. How many? Just a few. How many? That pile. Hundreds! Hundreds! From the corner of my eye, I saw Krisha come out of the office. Out! He started to turn. No! I grabbed him. Please don't stop me. Please! What will I do? Where will I go? Anywhere but here. No! Yes! Sat him. I have never liked him. Hey, you can go too. What? Me? What did I do? Your friend doesn't fit. Your sort of person is ten of ten. Come on, Sita. We walked slowly to the door. We didn't.
fishermen. I don't trust them. I suppose you've been out to sea lots of times. In your father's yacht. Cinder, my father never had a yacht. You said... I know I said, but he didn't. My uncle, he has money. The only one in my family who has. He'll be glad to see you. I hope so. He went to London. My father didn't. Chauffeur driven car? He was a shepherd. Shepherds don't have yachts or chauffeur driven cars. When the soldiers came, my father, he wouldn't leave. He hid me under the house with all of the money he had, and I was in there with the sheep, in a small, dark hole. I never could stay in the dark. Or the smell of sheep now. When the soldiers came, I heard them. What did they do? I can't talk about it. You might feel better. I don't want to forget it, and I don't want to feel better about it, but I expect it reminds you of a story. No, it is a story. Your story. So, we just sat and watched the sea, which would have been nice, but the waves were getting to get bigger. And soon, it started to rain. This is like Sinbad. This really is like Sinbad. The boat was rocking wildly from side to side. We were holding on. The sailor was shouting something, but I could hardly hear him over the rain. What's he saying? He wants us to go below. No, tell him no. He says the police are following us. They'll see us and he'll be arrested. No, I can't. It's too small. It's too dark. I can't. No. The sailor leaned over to Krisha. I thought he was going to pull her up, but he didn't. He pushed. She opened her mouth to say something. Shocked. But nothing came out as she fell backwards into the waves. Oh, no. And so, I jumped. I jumped in after her. I hit the water with a smack. It took my breath away. I couldn't see her. I was shouting, Krisha! Krisha! But it wasn't doing any use. And I was falling from the salt water. I still had my case. We caught me back. I grabbed onto a plane to help me float. I still couldn't see her. I didn't even know if she could swim. I looked up at the side of the boat above me. The sailor was looking down. Then, the boat pulled away and I was on my own. I don't remember much else. I don't know how long I was in the water. The next thing I knew, I was being pulled out by an old man and woman.
doing so long? I am staying with a couple of old fishing people. They have very little, but they are very nice. They remind me of you. Lots of work. 
That's all right. You can work me. What are you doing? Green cards. We're going to be a doctor. You didn't ever have to see a case. And thank you for all those stories. 